right now you're known mostly all around the world for playing the billionaire in, in the Jurassic World and for uh, Life of Pi and for Lunchbox. <laughs> but actually, you know, uh, and of course, all the awards you're getting all around the world, etc. But this is a 1988 Salam Bombay right. film, one of the first films that you've done. Right. You've been doing this, but the recognition has come in maybe the last 10 years. Right. So has the, you know, but your work, your dedication, your interest is the same. So in what way has people's behavior toward you changed uh, in the last five years? When I started, people used to consider me as a good actor, but I could see that I am not ruling their heart. I'm not creating a spell in their heart. Uh, they are not carrying memories. They know that he is a technically he's a good actor. They used to have a respect for me. But ne they never, I could feel that they never used to carry that experience of my stories or my characters home. It, that was the main difference when I started getting my kind of stories. When I had the confidence to put my own interpretation to the characters. And then there was a kind of, uh, you know, world I started creating. And that started impacting uh, people's... Uh, intellect and their emotion. That was the time I was waiting for. Yeah. This is the warrior yeah. the film. So you talked about your turning point. In what way was this film for yourself a turning point? I was doing television, a lot of television and uh, most of the television was uh, verbal drama. There was no behavior in it. It was mostly informative drama where you have to tell the audience what's going in your head, what you are thinking. Everything you have to verbalize. Well, literal. 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 Yeah. Like, you know, a housewife can be in the kitchen, but still if she's hearing the television, she could follow what's going on. She doesn't need to look at it, you know. Okay. So that… That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that was a kind of limitation and I used to struggle with it, you know. Whenever I used to go uh, for the shoot of these uh, series, uh, sometimes the producer used to get bugged, you know. I used to hear… Uh, saying them that, you know, yaar, ye aage, ab ye scene lamba kar dega. <laughs> so, uh, they just wanted me to, you know, uh, blurt out lines, yeah. you know, as fast as I could, so that, you know, they, ha they can save money in the editing, they can save money otherwise as well, you know. They didn't want any kind of behavior. Even if sometimes I used to think that, you know, this guy shouldn't look like this, it should, it should look somewhere, some, you know, some, somebody else, they used to dissuade me. You know, yeah. because everything costs money. Right. So, uh, I was getting frustrated and at that time, uh, this uh, story came to me. And uh, at that time, I felt how things sometimes follow you and they, uh, they give you what you are looking for. I was looking for a story where I could behave in that story, where I don't need to rely on lines to communicate. And uh, this story came to me and I was reluctant to go because the casting director told me this is a, there's, a, there's a guy from London and he's looking for an a actor who can play warrior. Now I know my physicality and I said, no, I'm, I'm not going there because uh, you know, he must be looking for a bodybuilder kind of person and you know, I, I don't fit in. He said, no, 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 please go and meet him. And the, and the, and the time I entered the room, I had some feeling. I met this director, Asif Kapadia, and then we started talking. And then we, we kept on talking. And I had a feeling that there's something waiting for me here. Mm, yeah. And then the process started. And at that time, I was also indulging myself in production. So whatever money I earned, I have already invested in uh, some pilots. And they were supposed to be uh, approved. So I did the shooting of this film for two, two and a half months and then there was a kind of a spell of this story. This is the first time I experienced what a story can do to an actor, how it grows on you when you are continuously shooting a story or when you are, you know, continuously dealing with that character, how that character, that story create a spell on you and it becomes a part of your experience, it becomes real for you. And at the end of the shoot, my wife came to, to, the, to the shoot and uh, she was worried about the money which we have already invested in television. And she was saying, what do we do about that? And suddenly something said from inside me, she said, I said, just forget it. 
Life is showing me some path. Let me follow it. I don't care how much money I put there. I'm, I know, I have seen production. I am not made to deal with that kind of uh, life. I cannot become a producer where I have to think each and, you know, I have to think about money, how to save money. Where you have to tell your actors to talk fast so you can <laughs> <save money. laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so uh, that, you know, that this film showed me a, a, a path and yeah. I just followed it and, uh, you know, yeah. my life changed after that. Yeah. So, is, do you find there is a difference between, maybe it's too, being too general or uh, is that, the movies in the West versus movies that are made here is when you go work with Ang Lee to make Life of Pi or, is there a certain way of uh, developing a character that's very different than uh, when you work here or is it just with a director, like, you know, there is obviously there's one more thing of uh, Magbul, you know, which is also another a film in the Indian cinema. That's one of the things that was really very uh, powerful uh, right. character that you played or a powerful story. So, is it that the the particular director you get, or in the East versus West, are there different ways that we make films that uh, that make you an actor in a different way? See, there are a few differences, and they are very you know very important differences. Like sometimes in our industry, we are uh, the center of the story is the image of the star and all the departments serve that image. All the characters around him serve that image. The, the films which I do in Hollywood, there the, the center is the story, the power of the story. You can take anybody, you know, from Tom Hanks to everybody, all the big stars, they are serving the purpose of the story, yeah. not the image of the star. Mm -hmm. So that changes everything because all the departments are working towards communicating that idea, that story, and people bringing their own reflection, their own experience of their life to enhance that story, mm -hmm. not about serving a particular uh, 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 image yeah. or, you know, star's image. If you are not doing a conventional work, if you are not following conventional, uh, you know, uh, storytelling, you are made feel guilty about what you are bringing in a newness to the craft. Right, yeah. You are in pressure, yeah. you know, you are always like a threat. What, what is this guy doing? Why we are not being able to, you know, either you should come and serve our conventional uh, storytelling or you are an outsider, you are cre creating a kind of disturbance. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not, not just in acting, in about everything. I feel a lot of times here that you have to go somewhere outside and get the respect and then you'll get to do what you want to do here. Um, is that your experience? No, I, I, I think it's the audience which, uh, which really felt nice about uh, a, a person from their country getting recognition there, but not the industry. Industry only react to the business. If you do a business, if your film do business in, an, in the local market, only then you are, uh, yeah. you are recognized. Yeah. So they only react to business. Mm -hmm. That's a, sometimes, you know, it's a, it's a limitation for, for anybody, you know. It's, it's not an encouragement. So now we see, we know you, most of the people know you only through the characters that you play which are very, most often very deep, very serious. So, is there a lighter side to Irfan Khan? I mean, is there a goofy <laughs> side to Irfan Khan? <laughs> or are you your characters? <laughs> I keep doing it, you know, time to time, like uh, Piku I did or... Right, you know, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm more uh, drawn towards lighter side of life. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, uh, it's just that, you know, I didn't have choice, that's why I kept on doing all these films. Yeah. But I don't enjoy intense... <laughs> but, but, but as a person, <laughs> as a person, what are you? What, what's as your a person, idea of having I, fun? <laughs> I, I am drawn to humor, I am drawn to lightness, you know, not the, yeah. not the usual intense stuff, you know, it bores me completely, yeah. you know, I run away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if you weren't doing films, if you want to hang out with a bunch of friends and not discuss like, you know, some storyline or something of that sort, what are the sort of things you like to do? Anything. 
you know. <laughs> I like sports, physical sports. I love okay. to play physical sports wherever. Sometimes, you know, uh, we used to play, uh, I used to have cricket bat and kites in my, uh, you know, back of the mug car. Whenever I used to get chance, you know, we used to just go down and play. Yes. Earlier, I used to, uh, you know, uh, I used to stop my car at the street and I used to play with, with, with you know, on Sundays in town, people play cricket on, on, on roads. Yeah. So, I love physical sports. I love adventure in, in, in forest. Uh, forest is something, you know, which just, uh, it's, it's, it creates a spell on me. It's it like, you know, I, I forget the language when I go to forest. And uh, it just put me into a deep silence. And uh, it's a kind of high which yeah. I get. Uh, I think it's my childhood because my father used to take me to forest in my childhood. And uh, I'm deeply connected to forest. But not the way conventionally people go to forest where you are sitting in a vehicle and you are looking at the animals as an outsider. Oh, he's there. Oh, they're there. I don't enjoy <laughs> that. I only enjoy when I go in the forest, the way the animals are, you should be exactly in the same level where, you know, you should, shouldn't be in a vehicle, you should, you know, just walk around and see. Yeah. And that gives you an adventure, you know, that when you, when you, when you encounter an animal and you are equal, yeah. that is, that is kind of experience which is, which can't be matched, yeah. you know. So and, I, and by chance, if you see the tiger at that time. <laughs> but that was going to be my question, that what do you do? Yeah, when, I you swear, <laughs> that is an experience. <laughs> Have you, has it happened to yes, you? Yes, yes. So what you happens? You will feel that, you know, your, your knees are, you know, they're made up of water. <laughs> and that is an experience. Yeah. And... Uh, but has it happened to you when you went to the yeah, forest yeah, walk? Yeah, many so times. tell me about it, what happened? Uh, we, uh, there, are, there are some buffer jungles, you know, uh, buffer forest uh, of Jim Corbett. Uh, right. I don't want to tell the exact location because of, you know, so many things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they are still pristine forest, you know, they are still untouched. All the poachers, you know, they find out things about it. But it's still, you know, they are forest like you see a tree which has fallen down 20 years back, they're still there, it's getting, it's getting decayed. And you see that it's, there's not, uh, uh, not many people come there. Mm -hmm. In those kind of forests when you go, and you know that, you know, after, 50, after five meters, you don't know what is there. It's so dense. Yeah. So when you go there, and uh, when you're walking around, you know, uh, on, on, on the river bank, yeah. and you don't know what is there, suddenly, you know, we were, we were there, and uh, 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 a guy from, a uh, local guy was with us, and he just has one stick, that's it. And there was a mound, and after that, there was a deep inside. And as we, you know, climbed on that mound, like, you know, 10 meters away, uh, there was this uh, tiger and suddenly growled. Okay. It growled, but because, you know, what happens when the tiger is there, he, f f first, you know, he warns you, yeah. then growls. Then when you are too close, then he attacks with, with fright. You know, he doesn't attack because of, you know, some, uh, because, you know, he's, yeah. he's basically trying to save himself. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you know, we, the, the distance was too close. So he suddenly growled and he started growling. And then this guy panicked. The guy who was with us, the okay. local guy, the he expert. panicked. The expert, he panicked, and he started growling at him. Oh. <laughs> and he growled in a, you know, he just shouted desperately because he knew if, if you know, this is this is something, you know, we have gone, we have we have we have gone, uh, you know, we have crossed the limit. Too close for comfort. Too close because we didn't know. Uh, and then suddenly, you know, he backed up and you know, he, you know, he went away. So is uh, that the answer? You have to start growling if you see. Uh, I think you have to. You you shouldn't. Go, uh, yeah, you should. You should. You shouldn't uh, take away your eyes. Yeah. And uh, you know you have to face him. Yeah. And uh, so did we make all of you start growling or he, it just? No, <laughs> we didn't. No, no. He he's the expert. You know, he just growled and we were uh, we were you know. Just watching. Just watching and uh, <laughs> after yeah. you know even for six seven hours it was a kind of you know. <laughs> Strange, uh, you know, <laughs> blood pressure which is going on, and you know, I could, 
So, so did you go back again into such a forest or? Oh yes, uh, uh, oh yes, uh, and uh, also because it's, it's a most beautiful and most shy animal. Yeah. It's such a beautiful animal, you have to see it mm. in its, uh, and it, it doesn't disturb. It's, it's a, you know, when, when, a, when a human being starts disturbing the forest, he, wo he goes away. Right. He lives in a, f in a forest which is pure and pristine. Yeah. When you start doing, you know, uh, manipulation in the forest, he leaves that forest. Yeah. He's such a shy and beautiful animal. Yeah. Uh, so, Irfan, what's next for you? You've been… Is, what's your next movie or are you going to buy a sports team or what… what <laughs> <laughs> what's next for you? Uh, uh, I, will, I want to play first, you know, I, I don't know how to own a sports team. <laughs> I would love to play. We can play here right now, you know. <laughs> uh, what would you I, like to play? Soccer or what? Yes, yeah, soccer. Uh, so, yeah, we call football here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From football to kabaddi to kho kho to, you know, cricket, anything, badminton to anything, which shakes your body. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should auction a game with uh, Irfan to raise some money for the next chapter. Yeah, I was, I was saying, you know, let's make a league of, uh, of uh, what do you call here, uh, Lagori. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I think they haven't really thought about it, it could be a very entertaining uh, television game. Yeah, I think mm. we should produce that now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's see. So, do you have as parting words, what are you doing, what is the next movie, what is the next journey, which country are you going off to? Uh, I have just finished a film called Inferno, which is a third series in that uh, uh, Da Vinci Code series. Right. Uh, written by Dan Brown. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I happened to work with a fantastic team. Uh, Tom Hanks was there, Felicity John was there, and uh, um, Ron Howard directed it. Okay. Beautiful person. Yeah, uh, he's, he's fantastic. A, yeah, yeah. I had a great experience doing that. And uh, one of the few actors turned directors who's been really. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I spoke to him about yeah. about this, you know, and he said uh, I was not as creative as an actor. Yeah. That's why you know I stopped doing uh, acting. Yeah. Because I could see that I'm not adding creatively to the yeah. craft. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the kind of story he has told, it's, it's excellent, you know, outstanding. Yeah. And the kind of human being he is, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with these kind of people. Yeah. yeah. So, and after that, are you taking rest for a bit or are you off to the next film? No, I'm, uh, I'm still… Uh, see, the thing is, uh, at one point of time, I started my career as an actor because I was looking for acknowledgement. First, I was looking for acknowledgement from my mother. When I didn't get it, I started looking, you know, outside of my, you know, surroundings. And that somehow manifested into, uh, you know, becoming an actor that, you know, I thought actor, you know, basically it was for acknowledgement. And then through, you know, after drama school and, you know, uh, after many years, I came to know this is not acknowledgement, it is it is, a, it is an experience, you know, which you share with the audience and that becomes your, you know, uh, wealth. Yeah. That is the most important thing. When you do a story, you pour in your life and you make that thing, that, that, that story an experience for the audience and that becomes an experience for the audience and that sharing is something which is, uh, which is so precious, you know, you cannot match that kind of uh, thing. Okay. So that is something, you know, very, very... Uh, uh, special to me as an actor yeah. and uh, sometimes I don't plan, you know, I, I rely on how nature, you know, uh, nudges you and you follow that and, you know, yeah. uh, see what's, what's going to happen. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Thank you. Irfan. Thank you. Very much. सुन सुन के थक गई कोई भी वादा निभाया तुमने जानू शादी से पहले क्या कहा था जानू जमीन पर पांव नहीं रखने दूंगा तो घर में कारपेट तो है ना जानू डायमंड दूंगा डार्लिंग अपना बबलू किसी हीरे से कम है क्या प्रॉमिस कुछ किया था नीला को चोर लेकिन हमारे इंश्योरेंस एडवाइजर्स आपको वही प्रॉमिस करेंगे जो पूरा हो सके एडवाइज टोक्यो लाइफ क्योंकि इंश्योरेंस ऐसी बढ़कर है आपकी जरूरत